The field of psychology has, for the past few years now, been undergoing a sort of identity crisis. Uh, as I've discussed before, they're having a pretty serious problem with reproducibility. Uh, interesting studies that seem to tell us profound truths about the human condition end up being unable to be verified, either because of poor study design or underhanded tactics on the part of scientists desperate to get an interesting result, or just because of the cruel reality of weird statistical anomalies. I've talked about a few examples over the past few years, but recently we've had a few pretty high-profile cases pop up. Pretty much every adult out there with even a passing interest in psychology has probably heard of the Stanford Prison Experiment, uh, which was performed in the 1970s, back before we had things like ethics in science. Uh, and that's always been sort of the defining takeaway for people like me, probably who took a few classes, a few psychology classes in college and whatnot. Here's a cool thing that someone did that we can't do anymore because it's pretty unethical, in fact, to make a bunch of students pretend to be either prisoners or prison guards and then let the guards enact whatever rules and punishment they want to control the behavior of the prisoners. And then there's the ethical problem of uh, how it ended, which was just after a couple of days, even though it was meant to go on for two weeks. Uh, it ended apparently because the girlfriend of the professor running it, Philip Zimbardo, saw the giant mess that was happening and convinced him to pull the plug. Thanks to her. Uh, seriously, <laughs> like somebody, somebody in that room needed some sort of ethics. Um, and it turns out, though, that there were other ethical problems with the study that have only fully been proven very recently. A French filmmaker by the name of Thibault Le Tessier, Texier, I'm sorry, I'm not good with French. Uh, he's published a book in which he sorted through all of the old records, the transcripts, the tapes from the experiment in order to show once and for all that the prison experiment isn't just unethical, it's a lie. Uh, most crucially, the filmmaker found uh, unambiguous evidence that Zimbardo lied about whether the prisoners were allowed to leave at any time. He claimed that they were, but the transcripts show him instructing the others to not let them leave. Uh, Zimbardo claimed that he meant in those transcripts that uh, they had signed a contract agreeing that they had to use a specific safe phrase, but sorry, they found the actual contracts too, and they have no mention of any safe phrase in them. So he was lying about his explanation for the lie. Uh, Zimbardo also claimed that the guards came up with all of the rules themselves to uh, punish the prisoners, which again was shown to be a lie. He had in fact hired an ex-prison inmate to work with them and give them a list of rules inspired by his own experience. The final nail in the coffin is the confession of the most famous of the prisoners, a man by the name of Douglas Corpy, who Zimbardo claimed experienced a complete mental breakdown during the experiment. Corpy has gone on record repeatedly now to state that he was play acting, attempting basically to act the way that Zimbardo clearly wanted him to act. Any real stress, Corpy said, was due to the fact that the guards wouldn't let him have his textbooks and he had planned to spend that entire experiment studying for finals that took place right after the experiment was supposed to end. Once he realized that he couldn't just kick back and study in prison and that he would probably end up failing his finals because of it, that's when he wanted to leave the experiment. But Zimbardo refused to allow it. Hence, a breakdown. There are obviously huge ethical problems with any experiment being run this way, but this one is especially bad because of the rippling effect that such a famous study has had throughout our society. Zimbardo's conclusion from the study, which he has championed at every opportunity on television and even as an expert in courtrooms, uh, is that we're all just slaves to our environment. Uh, good, normal people can do horrible things just because of the situation they happen to find themselves in, whether that be a fake prison, Nazi Germany, Abu Ghraib, or going to rob a bank. It's a comforting thought for some people, but more and more evidence shows that it's actually quite wrong. No one can replicate the prison experiment because it was a sham. Good people in bad situations don't necessarily turn into monsters. The people marching in Charlottesville with tiki torches aren't just good kids who got caught up in a parade. 
They're Nazi bigots who joined of their own volition. To be clear, uh, I don't personally believe in free will. Uh, I think that everything we do is the result of things that happened before us. And I don't believe in evil that can't be changed. I do believe that bigots are bigots for a reason. Uh, They were raised that way. They're gullible. They end up in the wrong crowd. They have extremely low uh, IQ and bad influences, things like that. That's what leads to this bigotry. But I don't think that any one situation can fully change a person overnight, as Zimbardo claimed with his experiment. If I were to suddenly be drafted into U.S. Immigrations and Customs Enforcement, ICE, for instance, I would die before I ripped a child out of her father's arms just because they were attempting to immigrate into America. I mean... I'm serious. I would rather die. Uh, I don't think the people in ICE are evil, but I do think that for the most part, they are bad people who volunteered for the opportunity to do bad things to other human beings. And if they were good people, then they would quit their jobs rather than commit the atrocities that they're currently committing. Uh, Thanks to Zimbardo, the people of ICE and those working for the Trump administration, they can excuse their own behavior as just being a product of their current environment. And once they're out of that environment, now they can deserve to live a life guilt-free. That's a dangerous idea and a wrong idea uh, based on the science we have. To borrow from the First Lady's recent initiative and to then make it slightly more grammatically correct, sorry, but you guys just need to be better.